Hello, this is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. I almost said Branko Malic of Al Qaeda because I was fixed on this. Oh, the Freudian slips. Uh, in this uh, video, uh, I'll do a bit of criticism of uh, other people's work. I don't like to do this, but I I just felt compelled to because I just stumbled upon the worst example of. Uh, of an attempt to uh, show that war in Yugoslavia was uh, some kind of NATO ploy. <laughs> uh, most of alternative research, alternative media is uh, prone to, to make this assumption and this assumption is extremely, extremely, uh, on extremely uh, clumsy and fragile foundations. And this 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 article and this podcast is just about the verse in the great competition. I won't go into detail of all of this because it is not important important because he makes so much uh, frankly unbelievable uh, unbelievable mistakes in the beginning that it really there is no need to to go all the way. Or what he will conclude. Uh, now, for those who don't know, I'm from Croatia, and I I was 15 years old when war started. I was here all the time, unfortunately, <laughs> and now I live on the border with Bosnia. I do tend to know a few things about this from personal experience and some from from uh, from literature, of course, because. No matter your native, this native common sense you have, if you want to communicate it to somebody who cannot show ex-Yugoslavia on the on, on the map, will not help you to to communicate with him. So you have to read a few books and and, and uh, give 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 uh, give some. Uh, <clears throat> comprehensible form to what you experience, what you seen, heard, and read at the times when it was happening, because you just couldn't uh, close your eyes to what's happening. And this, uh, this, 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 uh, this uh, so-called research is probably the worst there is <laughs> at this moment on internet. So he starts quoting a few passages. He says, uh, The conventional explanation of how Yugoslavia fell apart is that ethnic and religious tensions led to civil wars. That was not a civil war. Okay. Necessitating the breakup of the country into serious, serious or smaller states. This is not the conventional explanation. Most of the conventional explanations of how Yugoslavia fell apart are rather more detailed. And uh, ethnic and religious tensions are, uh, I'd say rather ethnic tensions are, uh, were a strong incitement to uh, war. <clears throat> and there were still a plethora of other reasons that have a long history, that have a history that goes down to at least uh, a later 19th century and to the history of Yugoslavia itself and Yugoslavia before Yugoslavia because there were two Yugoslavias. So first Yugoslavia was created after First World War and uh, as a kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovens and that was an ill-fated uh, country that was a model of corruption for all Europe. It was probably one or one of the most or the most corrupt, corrupted country in Europe of its time, and it was trampled by uh, Third Reich in, in a week or so. Although it was it was uh, uh, it was uh, it was uh, for the last few years of its existence, it was a fascist. Uh, let's say that fascism uh, come with sympathies to Nazism was. Uh, uh, was a uh, ideology that was uh, that was taken as a, as a way to go 
uh, at that time, and it was the sign signatory of uh, this tripartite uh, pact. But in Belgrade, there was a coup, and the um, <coughs> government was uh, overturned, and then Hitler attacked, and so on. It's a long story. But there were two Yugoslavias, both fell apart ugly, both were ill fated, and there were multiple reasons why they fell apart. The second Yugoslavia uh, was a communist country run by Tito's communists, who were the only military force left standing in 1945 when the war ended. They uh, they were uh, they were running running the country until the breakup of 1991, uh, official breakup when when. When the war started, and this smaller state, uh, this tends to 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 make you believe that that it was some kind of what I want to point out that it was some kind of, of I don't know substantial. The Yugoslavia is substantial moniker. These smaller states, uh, these people, some of them already had their own states before Yugoslavia. Uh, some had a semi-autonomy and so on in other in, in as a part of other other political entities and so on. It's Yugoslavia was a, a rather synthetic, a rather romantic project in its first in, in, iteration, first installment, and second it was a modernist communist project that fell <coughs> as the modernity fell in ninety. Uh, at the time, uh, at the wake of the 90s. And now, the reality is that Yugoslavia was knowingly and willingly destroyed by NATO, with Al-Qaeda playing a critical role in the wars in Bosnia, Kosovo and Macedonia. This is not the reality, it was not intentionally and willingly uh, uh, destroyed by NATO, because war didn't start in Bosnia, where Mujahedin played a relatively minor role, it started the war started in Croatia in 1901 and there was no no NATO and no no Al Qaeda there this is uh, symptomatic for alt media luminaries and this one this guy is especially interesting because i noticed that he is trying to portray himself as some kind of ultimate empiricist uh, the man who who will never uh, put in the forefront his favorite theory if it is and never hold to it if it meets with the stubborn facts and now he is <laughs> uh, he's not only ignoring the facts he 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 didn't even look into the facts he looked into what what, what interested him because his knowledge as i can uh, deduce from this uh, article his knowledge of yugoslavia is below the level of wikipedia Wikipedia is not a good source, but at, at least in Wikipedia you have maps, you have, for instance, armies, you have some of those things. He could get at least some picture of it, but this is the, this is completely, completely, uh, completely unresearched uh, attempt to to construct a narrative and to uh, imagine the one explanatory. Uh, all explanatory principle that is NATO did it, yet NATO didn't do it. NATO played its role in the late 90s and now it's playing a crucial role, but at the beginning, at the outset, at the breakup of Yugoslavia and causes of Yugoslavia, there is absolutely no evidence. I would like to see it if there are some, but there is absolutely no evidence that this is the case, that there are evidence, to the, while the evidence to the contrary abound. And why NATO destroyed Yugoslavia? This is the other other reason why uh, why NATO has to be the bad guy. Because this this man is leftist, and I saw this on that crap site, Global Research, this way of thinking. Namely, I quote: "Because during the Cold War, Yugoslavia was a non-aligned socialist country that didn't sign up either the Western or the Eastern blocs, but it loved American money." and instead mostly focused on building a decent country for itself. No, it was not focused on building a decent country for itself. It was focused uh, on maintaining a party bureaucracy in power 
and trying to figure out how to keep the country from falling apart. Uh, because when Tito died, the leader, the great leader, in 1980, uh, the trouble started, and they started first in Kosovo, because Kosovo was a place of troubles from the day it was annexed to Serbia in 1912, in the aftermath of Balkan Wars, and when it was run for a short time by the secret society of Serbian officers called Black Hand, and those guys... Uh, were uh, very heavy-handed in uh, dealing with uh, local Albanians and Kosovo was a place, uh, the great massacres occurred there. Uh, you have, for instance, there is no, I think, English translations, but uh, Dmitry Tucevic uh, was a Serbian socialist and he was soldier on Serbian soldier on Kosovo and he wrote about those massacres of villages, uh, villagers that happened in the aftermath of quote-unquote liberation and annexation of holy land of Kosovo to Serbia and tensions uh, were there, uh, there were permanent uh, b tensions, uh, clashes, uh, so on and so forth <clears throat> so Yugoslavia was trying, uh, was in fact not building a decent country, but trying to not to fall apart because it was falling apart <laughs> on the day one. Eh. They industrialized with workers owning shares in the factories they built and run. <laughs> this is typical. This is typical for people in the West. Uh, taking words on face value. Yugoslavia is good because it industrialized and workers own shares in the factories. But how do you know? How do you know what kind of industrialization was this? And what kind of workers owned the shares in what kind of factories? Because the industrialization was uh, better than, than so, more intelligent than in Soviet Union, perhaps, and then Hungary, Magyarska. But it was it was socialist industrialization, industrialization for industrialization's sakes. Th th those were huge, uh, huge uh, companies. With uh, uh, you had a, a situations when, when they build an industry just to employ people, and then we come to this uh, workers. Uh, workers running uh, the firms. That was called samoupravljanje, self-governance. Self-governance meant, for instance, in the 80s, when Yugoslavia was in its long overdue decadence, was that you had people who, who were on sick leave for years while not being sick. That was, that was a normal thing then. It is not, not, not always, but that was, that was a main tendency. And uh, the... Self-governance was an attempt to 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 cope with the death of Tito, and it was conceived in the early 70s, mainly by Edward Kardelj, a uh, Slovenian communist and one of the top people in Yugoslavia, uh, when they tried to figure out 10 years before Tito died what will replace him as some kind of guarantee of stability, and that was this alternative way of running the economy that was complete flop in reality so don't believe what you what you read what you heard about uh, what yugoslavs told about themselves especially their propaganda they maintain good international relations and good economic growth no they, they there was no good economic growth economic growth uh, was in the 70s, mid 70s, from the late 70s, it was economic abyss. I was, uh, when Tito died, I was five years old, and I already knew more or less what the word inflation means because inflation, inflatia, that was mantra. You could hear that everywhere, uh, dinar, uh, Yugoslav uh, monet, was unbelievably inflated. That was that was the the, the, the normal uh, uh, effect of living. When the five-year-old kid knows what the inflation is, how can you call that country economically growing for fuck's sake? <laughs>
and this helped unite the disparate, yeah, like hell it is, Southern Slavic peoples and they intermingled and intermarried. Well, they, they did. I come from the family that is, to an extent, multi-ethnic and remained like that. And however, during a few short years, from around 89, not from around, but from around, from 89, all of that fell apart in a violent fashion. No, it was falling apart in a, uh, in, in a violent fashion from 1918, when the clashes on Kosovo began. In the late, what happened in the late 80s is that Slobodan Milosevic came to power in Serbia and uh, struck an alliance with Serbian nationalists. One of the, the most prominent was Dobrica Ćosic, uh, writer and ex-communist turned nationalist uh, who devised, practically reiterated uh, the ideology of Greater Serbia, which sees Bosnia as Serbia and Croatia, at least 80, 70 to 80 percent of Croatia to be Serbia and Milosevic rode on that wave and uh, Serbs were, uh, everybody was preparing for the breakup of the country that was inevitable, not in the sense of the war, but in the sense that it was defunct, it didn't work, and Serbs were first to uh, construct this aggressive uh, expansionist nationalist politics, and eventually uh, the federal army uh, had a federal army on their side, turning it de facto in uh, in a Serbian army, uh, and this was uh, this was in the works uh, for a long time. This was not in in, in a two years. And Yugoslavia is now several poor countries, they industrialized, blah, 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 blah. If you look at the maps of Yugoslavia in the late 80s compared to that, he was looking at the maps to the late 90s. You can see how Croatia, Bosnia and Serbia began as ethnically mixed areas, especially Bosnia. By the end, there were distinct monocultural zones, of course. And he's surprised by this because, uh, as he said, national hatreds, ethnic tensions don't play a significant role. Well, they are. That's why they, 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 they are ethnically cleansed. That's the term that was, as far as I know, first used to uh, to describe what what Serbia Serbs uh, their army and their especially Chetnice, their regular troops did in Croatia, because uh, this was an idea of ethnically clean. Oh no, so uh, that is ethnically homogeneous uh, Serbian, uh, greater Serbian state. And this, this is the dream, this is the idea uh, that consolidated in its modern version by Ilya Garashan in the Serbian Minister, Minister of Interior uh, and uh, Prime Minister for some time from the mid to late 19th century, the second half of 19th century. It's that old this idea, this and this plan, if you like. So it was far before there was a NATO. <laughs> I think you could uh, you could uh, shoot an occasional buffalo at Langley at that time. There was no CIA at that time, and this was already uh, already something that was uh, creating tensions. And on the other hand, creation. Uh, uh, Montenegrin and other people's ideas about their nationality. They, they, those were uh, ger the, not germs. Th those were things that created conflicts before Yugoslavia even came into existence in the first Yugoslavia. Won't go into that, but it was terrible. Th those are not uh, things that somebody uh, invented and implemented in two years. It was a process. And it was steered, unfortunately, by uh, both by politicians and especially by uh, intelligence services to create war. I don't know if a war could have been prevented. I would like to dream it it was possible, but I think in the end it was it, it just went too far and especially because Milosevic and he was more or less uh, completely supported by Serbs in the nationalist fervor. fervor felt uh, secure in their victory. They had federal army on their side. They have the best meats money can buy. And they thought they would win. 
So that was one reason I think that war was unavoidable. The other reason is that Croats, uh, for instance, were the overwhelmingly to leave the Yugoslavia, although before 1990 you couldn't publicly uh, speak about seceding from Yugoslavia. I remember that very well. Uh, the first Croatian propositions were for uh, confederate, co turning it into confederation because it's, it was a federation of republics. And by the way, they had a legal right to secede, among other things. And Croatia enacted this right uh, First Slovenia, then Croatia, then Bosnia, <laughs> for very good reasons, believe me, because they were uh, they were uh, they were uh, put in this position. They wanted this. Let's be clear about it. But there was no way they could uh, do anything else, because this is interesting. How Milosevic operated? Uh, <laughs> he uh, he and his clique. He. Uh, among other things, uh, had a, had a, something they call dogajanje naroda. This is a little uh, difficult to re, uh, to translate. It uh, literally would be a happening of the people, but it's more like Heideggerian term, coming to pass, or the event, or the advent of the people, where they th those were completely controlled. Uh, demonstrations like this color revolutions of NATO but this is before NATO ever thought about something like that <laughs> or maybe NATO worked with Milosevic uh, anyway uh, they would they would the great gatherings of people used to oust the regional uh, authorities first in uh, so-called autonomous regions of Vojvodina and Kosovo that were uh, at that time existing in Serbia to make Serbia one administrative unit under one, only one uh, undivided authority. That was first thing he did. And that was, that was done by people coming supposedly spontaneously, for instance, in Novi Sad in Vojvodina before the uh, building of, uh, I, I don't remember the name of the institution of regional communist uh, union or <laughs> whatever it's very they're very complicated terms hard to translate in english maybe uh, when i go into detail uh, on some other occasion this yugoslav crap i will i will i will provide provide the correct terms and they would be ousted uh, not really physically shouted out or police would come or uh, and when he, when he uh, uh, managed to do this in uh, Serbia, and by the way, uh, on Kosovo, he managed uh, to remove first Azem Vlasi, who was communist, uh, communist leader in Kosovo. Very intelligent man. He's still active, I think, in politics to an extent. Just to say this, uh, when uh, just to skip ahead a bit, when NATO attacked. There was no other political force in Kosovo, save the Kosovo Liberation Army, that is like semi-terrorist. But that's not because Albanians had no other forces, that's because uh, Milosevic uh, managed to remove everybody with whom he could do di dialogue. And left, it is my opinion at least, he left standing only those who were prepared to kill or be killed, and nothing else. Uncompromising uh, guerrillas and so on. So, it is, as you already, I think, can feel, this is not so simple as this British author is trying to, to show. And when, when, when that worked in Serbia, then he tried to, the federal state. He, and first was Slovenia, they wanted to make this... Uh, happening of the people in Ljubljana, in, in a capital of Slovenia, and Slovenia authorities forbid this. They were supposedly to go to, to Ljubljana and break bread with, with Slovenian authorities, and of course these guys knew what's, what's, what's coming, and they just, they just uh, stopped them, and that was, uh, that was a signal for Croatia too, and it was obvious that there will be, there will be war. Uh, 
intervention in Slovenia was very short and not so bloody, although some blood was spilled, because there was no significant minority, Serbian minority in Slovenia, that Milosevic could use as a pretext and as a, as a force, fighting force, because they... Uh, they distributed weapons to Serbs in Bosnia and Croatia to rise uh, at the moment when Croatia um, uh, secedes so they can rise and and uh, blockade the country in the places where Serbs are uh, in, a, in a bigger numbers, uh, let's say bigger minority or even major, majority in some counties in Croatia at that time. And then Yugoslav People's Army would enter uh, to to uh, restore order, as the Russians like to say, but that would be practically occupation. And this is what happened. And it was not just occupation, it was ethnic cleansing. Wherever that army came, uh, people of other nationality were either killed or expelled. And this is how it began. And then it spilled over in Bosnia. And in Bosnia, it went crazy and now we'll come to that Bosnia and now he goes full stupid we also got the war got the war in Bosnia for 92 to 95 where there wasn't one single faction that wanted independence so much as three distinct factions the Croats Serbs and Bosniaks Initially, the Croats and Serbs fought together to try to unite Bosnia with Serbia and Croatia, but Croatia then switched sides, partly because they were also engaged at the same time with their own war of independence against the Serb-controlled Yugoslav army. As a result, Croats in Bosnia started fighting against the Serbs. <laughs> in Bosnia, Serbs attacked the same way they did in Croatia and in Croatia they were already it was already a stalemate because Croatia had no army in the beginning it had the police and volunteers sometimes armed with hunting weapons sometimes with weapons that were illegally bought uh, in the uh, various places of the world one of the neighbors who, who was big on selling weapons and aid in Croatia was Hungary now these idiots that say that NATO Help the breakup. Uh, usually, say that NATO was <laughs> arming Croatia. Uh, this guy does not say that to his credit, but uh, these global research uh, nut cases uh, like to point this out. Well, they don't. If they can't read, they can look at the pictures and see that Croatian army has a variety of weapons, a variety of variations of AK-47. That is, Srvena Zastava Automatska Puška. That's a Yugoslav version of, of AK-47 or a Hungarian version of the same rifle that is to say Warsaw Pact or at least Eastern European, not NATO weapons. Uh, collaboration with, uh, with America and NATO was only later in the beginning. The first thing that was done to Croatia at the wake of this, its secession was to put it under arms embargo and uh, international community was uh, the leading countries as USA, France, Italy and England were in favor of putting an arms embargo on Croatia. So you have a country that was attacked, supposedly is not attacked, it's, it's a kind of like civil war, but it was attacked and it has no army, it has to build up its army practically illegally uh, while fighting the war, because it was not, uh, it was not like uh, you uh, when it started that uh, some kind of stalemate could have been arranged or peace, because well, Serbs and their leadership felt confident that they will win, and they had all the right to feel confident. But lo and behold, they lost. And very interesting thing is that most of those alternative researchers point out that. Uh, this breakup of Yugoslavia uh, somehow involved uh, removing Milosevic. Milosevic was the main interlocutor to the West. For instance, I'll give you one example. Lawrence Fischburger, uh, Eagleburger, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Fischburger. <laughs> you know, who, who makes burger from eagles? I'm sorry, it's just a stupid surname. Anyway, 
Good old Lawrence was a long time uh, aficionado of Belgrade. Uh, he was uh, ambassador ta- uh, there at the time, and he d- he had a lot of business connection with with state-run firms in uh, ex Yugoslavia, and the law. Uh, Belgrade was a capital of both Serbia and Yugoslavia, and he knew people there. He was well connected, and he was pro-Serbian 100%. And he was the he was the advisor to George Bush Senior when the war started, and he was uh, famous in, for saying that uh, to George Bush, "What to do? Sit back and relax," because they they. They expected that Croatia will be trampled in the matter of months. That's my opinion. And that's how it felt while you were living here through all this. Uh, Although a real American player was Ante Marković, that was Yugoslav Prime Minister, who tried to save the country, at least economically, uh, by monetary reform, and he failed. And, some, and then Milosevic had Karl Blanche to, to, to just take his place and created vacuum. And this, of course, economic crisis helped uh, the warmongers, but it was, not, uh, it was not the only cause. So as you see, this... And, and now, Croats, uh, Croats and Serbs were fighting. Was, uh, this is unbelievable. Serbs did the same thing in Bosnia. They attacked the Bosnians first. Bielina was first city uh, that was attacked. It was only civilians that were massacred. The attack was led, led by Arkan. Uh, psychopath, uh, secret services assassin, and uh, leader of Serbian special forces, and so on, one of the wildest, uh, wildest uh, figures in the in the war of Yugoslavia. And after Bielina, it was one part of Bosnia in this war was ethnically cleansed, and now it's called Republika Srpska, and it is a part of Bosnia that is state within a state because it is completely Serbian, ethnically homogeneous, because all other ethnicities are either somewhere else or watching the grass grow from below the ground. <coughs> so this is not what happened and the Croats were able to offer the first resistance to Serbs because by that time Croatia already consolidated a ragtag army and Croatian Croatians in Bosnia were helped from mainland Croatia and they were in alliance with Mus. They were in an alliance with Muslims, and then what happened? Then the Muslim and Croats uh, got into clashes. This is complicated. I won't go into that. And then Croats and Serbs, they were still at war, but some factions were collaborating. Then Muslims got in war with other Muslims in the northwest of the country, and that other Muslims were collaborating partly with Serbs, and everybody was fighting everybody, and everybody was collaborating with everybody, and it was disgusting. Anyway, we have a, <laughs> regarding this, we have a saying here. When you want to say, when somebody asks you, you had some business venture of, or, or, or something happened and they want to know, did you fare good or ill? If you fared good, you say, Mirna Bosna. Mirna Bosna means Bosna in peace. And that uh, tells you something, this is a very old saying. And uh, uh, even younger people than me don't use it anymore. This means uh, Bosna, trouble, war, clash, screw up. That's something that is deeply ingrained in the history of the country. This is not something NATO bring about. Or maybe some somebody will prove me wrong, but I think you have a hard time. So as we see, uh, this this uh, this is this is not poor research. This is no research. This is a wishful thinking, and I'm pointing this out precisely because I know this guy uh, has this. Uh, I I didn't say who he was, and I hope you nobody will recognize the page because I don't like this personal attack. I'm trying to make a, a broader point here. He uh, um, uh, 
rebukes others for not being empiricist, not uh, researching paper trails, empirical evidence, and then bringing about some fancy conspiracy theories because they want them to be true. And this is precisely what he did here, and he did it terribly. David Icke would, uh, would, would have done better, I think, because this is no research. This is completely... And now this is the... I will skip the main part of the article. Willingly criticize me, read it, and then go on criticizing me. But I don't think it's 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 uh, there is any use to go into this when he got all this wrong. He's trying to set up the scene, trying to make the past conform to the present and to the future, but it does not. Uh, the existence of Mujahedin in Bosnia was a fact, and they did a lot of uh, mischief, but they were hardly, hardly uh, the, the, the significant force in nascent Bosnian army. And Alija Izetbegovic, uh, the Bosnian leader, issued this call to Islam world, uh, world, I don't approve of this in the least, I don't approve of Izetbegovic, I don't approve of, about a lot of things, but I can tell you, when you take these free nations, I am Croat, and Croats were at war with Bosnia, at uh, Bosniaks at one time. You take uh, a number of civilians killed in Bosnia, and and see who uh, who was on the receiving end the most. And by the way, Srebrenica did happen. If anybody of you knows what, it, what I'm talking about, uh, this is supposedly uh, the, the, the invented Holocaust uh, uh, did, uh, enacted by Serbian army. It, 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 like hell, it did happen. <laughs> and they were, oh, sorry, this is not laughing matter. And they really had it. They were in the dire straits, and they were, to some extent, to great extent, their leadership was to blame because they were, uh, they were trying to 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 play stupid and avoid the war. And war was uh, unavoidable at that point in Bosnia. So they uh, he issued the call for Mujahedin, and I remember uh, it's a strange thing. Uh, I lived, uh, I'm born in in the border uh, borderlands. <laughs> call it Kraina, uh, towards Herzegov, Bosnia and Herzegovina in Croatia. I am five, five kilometers from the border. And I remember in 92, uh, we were under, uh, lights were out in this little town I lived in. Then we, because we were always in this, uh, always uh, uh, cautious uh, about these uh, air raids and so on, and we were drinking, we kids, in, in, in some, on the terrace of some uh, bar that was closed. We had a few bottles of wine, and there was motel, and then we saw, uh, I saw a guy with a turban, with a knife. I thought I was, I was drunk, very good wine. <laughs> and then uh, they were... Uh, they, they entered Bosnia to Croatia. That much is true for for uh, for, for that time. And, but there was uh, no not uh, number of them, number of mujahedin uh, or uh, Islamists in Bosnia was insignificant as a cause of the breakup of Yugoslavia and the Yugoslav war and fighting in Bosnia. They did great mischief. They they killed in in the most brutal fashion uh, Serbs and Croats. I think most of the Serbs got the worst of Mujaheddin kids, but they were not. And even now, there is not that many of those people. This this, this is a myth. For instance, uh, Russian aligned alt media like to propound this myth because uh, they were not really that good accepted. Uh, among people in Bosnia, Bosnian Muslims are a little, <laughs> not little, but much different. But this is the other story. What I want to point out is that he, uh, by the by the moment he comes to the gist of his article, which by that moment I am not interesting in, interested in following him. 
He got everything wrong. And now, the Jews. This is very strange quote. And this will prove how clueless this guy is. I'll quote. Then, there's the Boyinka <laughs> connection. No one is at all. Boyinka is a mystery. <laughs> and I will solve it for you. Don't you worry. No one is at all sure where the Ramzi Yusuf came up with the name of his terrorist operation. The word Boyinka has been widely reported to be Serbo-Croatian, meaning BOOM! <laughs> or big noise, no it's not, or loud bang. Though the word does not appear in either Serbian or Croatian dictionaries, of course, because it does not exist, it is quite close to the Croatian word BOCHNICA meaning boom. I don't know in what uh, dictionary he find Bochnica. This is, I am Croat. <laughs> I am Croatian writer. I never heard for Bochnica. <laughs> but he got the ch right. Meaning boom. Okay. Khalid Sheikh Muhammad told USA interrogators that the word is not Serbo-Croatian, but is a nonsense word he adopted after hearing it on the front lines in Afghanistan, which is most likely true. Kevin Fenton of History Commons. Now, now look at these experts. An open source history website wrote that boink is an informal way of saying boink <laughs> in Slavic languages. When we want to say boink, we say boink. Why would I say boink <laughs> if I can say boink? Oh, oh he's so sad. John Berger of Intelwire, oh, another expert, has suggested yet another option, pointing out that in Croatian the word soldiers, this is called, is vojnika, which when written looks like this. Uh, vojnika, oh, vojnika. Okay, uh, but there is a catch. This, uh, my dear Kali Tribune listeners, and readers, uh, Voynika, this is Cyrillic script. And Cyrillic script is used by Serbs, not Croats. Croats used it to some late 19th century, but not anymore. And this is Serbs in ex Yugoslavia, Serbs and Macedonians use it. So this does has nothing to do with, um, oh, I'm sorry about this with Croatian language. So why am I pointing this this out? This is completely... Uh, uh, what is crazy about this? This is, this is a matter of online dictionary. A uh, Croatian a word for soldier is Vojnik and Serbian word and Bosnian. Not Vojnik and not in Cyrillic. Uh, people who are running alter open source history should be aware if this is the issue they are investigating that Croats don't use Cyrillic letters. This is very important. And this is this is this is the 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 the, uh, the level of research going into this. And I am uh, I took this. Uh, Oh no, I didn't want you to see whose page is this. I probably, probably I showed it at the beginning. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is to prove a point about this alternative research is extremely bad. And why I took this gentleman uh, to scrutiny is because he tends to be arrogant in the way that he um, likes to point out this empirical, he's empiricist and he's well read, I know he said something uh, like that about himself. He's not well read, he reads what, uh, what, uh, what he needs to construct his quote-unquote narrative and this got nothing to do with research, this pure crap. And this is not such a difficult subject. People think that uh, this Yugoslavia conflict was complicated. It was complicated, but no more than most of other complex conflicts. But you have to go into it. And there are books to read. For instance, I could recommend a guy who I don't like, but it's a great book, Misha Glenny, Balkans. 
that's not strictly a book about Yugoslavia. It's about Balkans from first Serbian uprising to some, I don't know, 2000. Uh, the history of Balkans, a great chunk of the book is devoted to war. Misha Gleni used to be a BBC uh, journalist and he spent a lot of time in Yugoslavia. He was good friend with Zoran Djindjic, uh, assassinated Serbian prime minister that sent Milosevic to Hague. Uh, I don't like him because I think he has this uh, British, classical British foreign policy prejudice towards Croats and I don't like, I uh, by default don't like that and I think he by default don't like Croats but that does not diminish the value of the book and for instance reading him you have uh, you won't like Croats that is my guys <laughs> when you read him but I do recommend him nonetheless because you'll have uh, you'll have a feeling for the depth of what happened of the multiply causes and so on. This talk about NATO inciting it, uh, I always felt, because uh, the war was mostly run by intelligence services, Yugoslav mostly Serbian-based intelligence services, but no side in the war could act without some kind of collusion and alliance with a respective rep uh, intelligence services of his home republic because uh, communist states were in fact run by intelligence services and they were the guys uh, who 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 were on the on the buttons of power but that does not mean again that uh, these actors like Franjo Tuđman of Croatia is it Begovic or Milosevic were not autonomous they were to an extent to an extent they worked with intelligence services it was complicated but this very fact points maybe to this uh, strange and mysterious uh, 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 premonition or hunch that there was some outside influence that incited it but to demonstrate this well people there is no absolutely no evidence of of, of documentary sort i uh, have this there is something about it because i i'm saying this because of what people told me people who were on the front lines and people who knew politicians or who were working for american ngos by the way american ngos and, and un and so on most of those people were well intentioned i knew some who worked in, in, in ex-Yugoslavia trying to help the civilians, uh, they were mostly mostly uh, genuinely, and I think even politics behind NGOs was genuinely to uh, construct some kind of solidarity between people. For instance, those who... who okay, I, won't, I, I was going to say something about George Soros, but I, won't. I will skip Soros for this time. What I see with this quote-unquote research, because research this is not, is this tendency of alternative, this postmodern tendency uh, to try to refashion the present or comprehend the present in accordance with your preferred narrative. The preferred narrative of this man is leftist, so he can flatly say that progressive country was destroyed by regressive Yugoslavia was not a progressive country but never mind uh, uh, this is the tendency to remold history what is past by what you want to see now or what you even see now as a fact and this is if you think about it quite an Orwellian urge all those people want to in a way stick it to the elites but I see here uh, the very pronounced urge to reconstruct the world according to your imagination because he is uh, the first part of article I went into which is not the main part but if it doesn't stand nothing will stand uh, that goes after it uh, he's, uh, he's trying to reconstruct everything he said this is 
Yeah, so I don't care much what this guy had to say because if he gave gave him a momentum to write this, this is wrong. This is, problem is uh, the, this, that these things are not so hard. Informations are not so hard to come by. You have a, a, a zillion of uh, different interpretations, but some things are really factual, and he gets uh, gets everything wrong. He he, he didn't even look it. But he has this narrative that NATO and uh, such such insti uh, global institutions, uh, globalization institutions, are uh, ultimate evil, which can be argued. But uh, one uh, worst thing, and what pisses me off, and why I always point out this, why I attack this alt research, alt media, is that he, uh, by, by virtue of doing, uh, by uh, awarding NATO such power, uh, he starts from the assumption that we people of ex Yugoslavia have no power, that we are enabled to, to do this by ourselves. And believe me, dear listener or reader of Kali Tribune, if anything, we are always been able to start wars. <laughs> There is political individuality and stupid political individuality to boot and autonomous. Uh, the, the players in the Yugoslav conflict were to a large extent, at least to late 90s, largely autonomous players, especially Milosevic. Milosevic played the West masterfully until he ran out of good cards and if anybody was in collusion to these anglo-american forces well anyway i hope it was not this was not too long-winded uh, here we will stop and i hope uh, in the future that we i'll do some more detailed exposition of these Yugoslav troubles because I have a feeling that people are interested in, it, in this and this is a difficult subject partly because the main thing with a guy like me living here is my native common sense and in order to mediate what I understand from my common sense to somebody who never who's never been here I have to read a lot of books I have to make an <laughs> A real, a real conceptual framework in order to 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 explain all of this. And uh, for instance, you have to read Dayton Agreement. <laughs> That's a long. I love reading bad long documents, but okay. And don't you, you? I don't always have time to go into this. So, uh, but it is a lot of work. That's uh, what I want to say. And it is very easy to get go wrong in the details. And devil is always in the details. So I'm a little wary on covering these subjects. I hope this was instructive, uh, interesting, and I hope that anybody who wants to uh, refashion history in the way this guy did uh, stops and thinks for, thinks for a moment on account of what I said here. Because I really have best intentions. If I could, if there was any way to hide the author. Oh, I would hide it because uh, I don't like this petty, uh, petty personal criticism. This is more the criticism of principles. Uh, this was Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. Thank you for your attention.